Yes. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to people joining us from around the world and the Midwest. It is Friday <laughs> in, uh, in um, San Antonio. Uh, not Saturday, like I said the last, at the last session. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to introduce, and I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong, like everybody does, Yo Young. Yes. Who is um, going to talk about type and code, a collection of ongoing typography research conducted by using computer algorithms. So if the tech crew can start the video. Hello, my name is Yeohyun Ahn. Thank you for watching my presentation today. I am an assistant professor of graphic design at the University of Wisconsin Medicine of the United States. I'd like to talk about type plus code series today, calligraphy. Calligraphy is the art of writing beautifully. I'm originally from South Korea. My childhood dream was to be a calligrapher. A calligrapher is someone who uses an instrument like a paintbrush, pen, or marker to create a particular style of writing that is artistic and expressive. I studied computer science with my parents' strong recommendation in South Korea. My father was a professor in civil engineering and my mother was a high school teacher in mathematics. Even my first name, Yeohyun, means in Korean, cosine in mathematics. I came to America as an international student in the graphic design MFA program at Maryland Institute College of Art. I did research how to create a computational calligraphy to combine what I loved and what I had to study. It was my class project from the workshop, Words, led by Marian Benjes. I referenced the Geomerative Library created by Richard Maxer to implement this computational calligraphy. Modern Graphic Design I started learning graphic design from Armin Hoffman's book, Graphic Design Manual, recommended by my Korean graduate director, Byung Gwon Oh at Iwa Women's University. It is a classic graphic design textbook published in 1965. I was fascinated by modern and constructive graphic design with human and organic touches from visual examples in the book. Later, accidentally I designed the cover art for the book, Graphic Design The New Basics written by Ellen Nupton and Jennifer Cole Phillips. Type plus code. My personal journey from calligraphy to computer science ended up with my MFA thesis, Type plus code, in 2007 at MICA. It explored the aesthetic of code-driven typography by using processing. Processing is a basic programming language for artists and designers. It was inspired by Korean calligraphy. Korean calligraphy is uh, textual and expressive, as well as empathize contrast between white background and black foreground letters. I created all of the typography and it was transformed to a beautiful layout by John Page Corrigan. This typography was invited to annual year in ideas issue for the New York Times magazine in 2008. Type plus code. The title of this typography is type plus code. It generates the word code on each branch of the tree. I referenced L-system algorithm to visualize a tree form in computation. It was created for the purpose of a cover art for the book, Type Plus Code Processing for Designers. It is Type Plus Code Processing for Designers. It is a tutorial book for artists and designers who have limited knowledge and experience in computer programming languages such as processing. As my MFA thesis, I explored the aesthetic of experimental code-driven typography with processing. 
and it was extended to a tutorial book Type Plus Code Processing for Designers with the two collaborators, John Page Corrigan and Viviana Cordova. This book consists of the chapters Basic Typography, Intermediate Design, Pattern Design, and Calligraphy. It was published by Center for Design Thinking at Maryland Institute College of Art in 2010. It is from the chapter Calligraphed. The letter S was created as an example of the chapter to demonstrate how to use a library geometry. The typography S was invited for the cover art for the magazine Letter Art Review in 2010. Letter Art Review is a quarterly issued international magazine for letter artists, calligraphy, and typography. Type Plus Code 2. Type Plus Code 2 was the name of my first solo exhibition at AIC Gallery in Chicago, uh, 2012. Type Plus Code 2 experimented with traditional and culturally oriented calligraphy to reinterpret into modern and contemporary typography by using computation. Type Plus Code 2 included diverse visual messages inspired by nature, address addressing environmental issues, healing through arts, exploring philosophical and religious interpretation regarding life, death, and love. Once I was asked, are you a designer or a programmer? I'm always aware that my typography should be legible, expressive, and storytelling with modern graphic design principles. This is green. It expresses the meaning of green. I invited numerous three forms on the plane and in animate outlines of the letter forms, green. I referenced the binary tree algorithm and geometrical library. It was my initial sketch. I created numerous sketches in processing. I worked with several variables and parameters in binary tree algorithm to control density. This is the final output. Now I have an unusual story. I had a heart attack unexpectedly in 2010. Now I have a stent in my coronary artery. It took almost one year to recover my body condition to normal. During my cardiac rehab program, I created numerous typography by using processing in bed. This is life burden one. It was inspired by the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season. I believe that life has seasons. It has spring, summer, fall, winter, and spring again. It was my note in 2011 regarding this typography. At my age, 35 years old, I suffered from heart disease. I thought that my life might be in the winter. I designed this typography with my hope that I will get recovered as if the spring comes again every year. It is a second burden of life. This animation begins with winter, then go to spring, summer, fall, and winter. Each animation na is not the same but new based on random positions where branches and leaves grow up as if every season is always new for us. This is A with a subtitle beginning. The letter form A is gradually emerged from a dark space through radiating light with circles. This is I with a subtitle life. It shows how a letter form I is born and formed on the base of the floods of living organisms. This is Y with a subtitle OM. It explores an experimental visual form, um, which is a major female reproductive 
sex organ that I created when I was waiting for a baby. This is my initial sketch. To visualize my sketch in processing, I referenced the binary tree algorithm that each node had two off springs. I generated numerous sketches to draw abstract tree forms on the outline of the letter Y, as it is a part of my name, with a seed font aerial in processing, and I chose a left bottom image as my final sketch in processing. This was my final sketch in processing. The color was inverted in Photoshop like this. Type plus code 3. It is an extension of the aesthetic of code-driven typography from cyberspace to physical space by using this type of application. It is an interdisciplinary art and design project crossing boundaries between calligraphy, graphic art, typography, computer art, and sculpture. It was my initial sketch in processing. I divided it by two pieces, 24 inches by 36 inches, because the maximum width and height of the laser cutter, Trotec Speed 400, which I used at Scrub Art Institute of Chicago, was 36 inches by 24 inches. I used the MDF, medium density fiber board. This is the final piece, 72 inches by 48 inches. This is the third burden of life. It reinterprets the meaning of life as an organic shape, consisting of numerous unexpe unexpected episodes connected from the root at the bottom and the branches on the top. I experimented with several materials such as MDF and scratchboard. This is the final piece. It was exhibited at the Exhibition Ideas of International Digital Media and Arts Annual Conference in 2014. The typography S was engraved on acrylic by using laser cutters in 2014. This is Erotica A. It reminds us of a southern area of body. It was a collaboration with Taegyeom Lee, assistant professor of graphic design at Iowa State University, by using Delta 3D printer and Pothron, that's a ceramic material, undergraded purple A by Taegyeom Lee by using the Erotica A. I provided uh, Erotica A as PDFs from processing. He converted it as OBJ format in a 3D modeling tool, Rhino. OBJ is an open file format that represents 3D geometry for 3D printers. It was printed like this. Typography plus code. I propose a new course, Typography plus code, to Visual Communication Design Department at Scrub Art Institute of Chicago in 2012. It was created by Esther Gu from the course. Originally, it is from a class project, Dimensional Typography, creating three dimensional typeface by using computation. The letter A on the left on the screen was extended to a physical space by using laser cutters. It is a photo from the front. It has several layers with each pigment of constructing the dimensional letter form, A. If it is open, it should like this. This is a generative A created by Matthew Kim from the same course. This is the generative motion typography by using particle algorithm and geometrative library.
This is poster series for Advent Christmas Vesper at Belfresa University. It was a collaboration with the Chapel of Resurrection at Belfresa University. This is a generative motion typography to visualize an image of God as positive growing energy in the universe. Embedding computation in graphic design education already exists, but still touching entry levels of experimental typography outputs, lacking arranging in a straight line with modern typography education. How we as graphic design educators would offer foundational, essential, and evolving typography methodology, education, and solutions by using computation as an extension of the modern typographic practices. Now I'm embedding my typographic researches by using computation, digital publication, and other traditional medium, such as silk screen, into graphic design education of the art department at the University of Wisconsin Medicine. Also, I'm developing generative typographic system as tutorials for graphic design students to explore more expressive typographic forms in computation. It is my plural illustration by using computation. I was inspired by a Korean contemporary Christian music, Flowers to Go Dildo in 2019. I used processing. I embedded my plural illustration into the letter F by using geomerative library in processing. This is flowers. This is a Korean character code, which means flower in English. Floral typography is a design trend that combines typography, calligraphy, and lettering with a floral element. Floral typography plus code. I embedded my typography flowers too into a class project in motion typography in the graphic design program in 2019 at the University of Wisconsin Medicine. At the beginning, students explored how to create illustration reminding us of flowers in computation. Then, each student investigated the final self-chosen typeface to fit into their own computational illustration and learned how to apply these to their letter forms in computation by using geomerative library. It was created by Bebat Almope from his beautiful computationally generated illustration to a generative typography with a letter form B. And this is created by Mo Chen. He used a Chinese character, Hua, which means flower in English. This is created by Lauren Chong. She used a special character, at and end. This is a large poster measuring 84 inches tall by 168 inches wide. It is from a portion of the poem Elrith by Edward Morick. The poem discusses the coming of spring. Violet, already dreaming, will soon begin to bloom. Listen, the sound of a harp. Spring, that must be you. It's you. I've heard. This is a final output in processing. If you zoom in, you would see the beautiful details. Dimensional Typography Plus Code. I was inspired by the book Dimensional Typography, written by Ami Abu Miller. It showcases expanding two dimensional modern typography to spatial and multidimensional typography forms. Also, I was inspired by the book Creative Code written by John Maida. 
It shows the pioneering works of computational visual design created by Casey Rees Van Pry and Peter Cho at the MIT Media Lab in the early 2000s. Also the another inspiration, Peter Cho on the right, another pioneer of computational typography. This is created by Riley Jones. This is created by Ivy Pong by using the letter B, I, and beautiful pattern with the letter G. And Jesselyn Mali R created this dimensional typography and another typography here. And this is created by Lia Corey. And this is created by Brain Wolf. This is created by Paul Bulgin by using silk screen. This is the final sketch in processing. This is a silk screen process. And this is the final A. This is from the course Creative Coding for Graphic Design created by Kendra Rajel about COVID-19. That's all I have today. Thank you for watching my presentation again. If you would be interested in learning about this project more, you would visit typeandcode.com and yohan.com. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is a feel a little awkward to watch my presentation, but anyway, I'm happy to uh, present my research paper at ATIP. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. That was very inspiring. And to, for it to end on that, that uh, COVID-19 um, <laughs> is a reminder of yeah, why we're all here online. Um, so it looks like we do have uh, hold on, a question. I will read it so that it's on the video. I love your use of computation and type. And I have also seen you with your students. You are so patient. How do you get your students who are afraid of technology to dive in and experiment? And that's from Kevin. Oh yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, because, uh, because of my unique academic journey uh, from computer science to graphic design, I dreamed of teaching computation, how to make a coding to graphic design majors. I really dreamed, like I had a dream <laughs> that the reality is, uh, I think most of my former students in my course uh, had kind of anxiety or concern yeah. about making coding. So at the beginning, I have to show them very inspirational typography by using computation to motivate my student. Like, oh, I hope I can do like this. <laughs> then, uh, because I have a background in computer science and graphic design, so I may know how to teach both. So I intentionally create tutorials step by step one, step two, step three, that let them feel more comfortable to make coding. Yeah. Then also I try to just support each student technically. So what is your idea? What's your visual concept? Then whenever they start the sharing, they already inst uh, initiate their motivation by yeah. using computation. <laughs> so I, I, I really try to serve my student to motivate. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. So you, you inspire them and then hold their hands as they engage with the tech. That's great. Okay, there's one uh, another question. It's also from Heather. How do you see processing and other tech molding how we create type in the future? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question that um, what kind of tool, what kind of programming language do we need to teach? Yeah, I Every semester when I teach creative coding for graphic design, yes, I sleep over, but still I think in an entry level of programming language in design area, I think starting with processing or P5, 
would be a good beginning. Then they can be more comfortable to play with the processing or P5, and then they can move on to Python, JavaScript, or markup languages. I think entry level just HTML coding yeah. in programming languages, uh, in programming world. HTML and CSS, it's not programming language, it's just a markup languages. Yeah. But I think, uh, yeah, just beginning with the HTML and CSS would uh, make a nice transition to think more logically. And then go to processing of P5, then go to Python. I think uh, it really depends on what's the goal, what is the class objectives that we can uh, cautiously choose what kind of programming language we have to introduce, yeah. particularly design majors at the beginning. That's that's great advice. I I um when I when I moved to Seattle um to do an internship at Microsoft in 1995, I learned HTML on the plane on the flight from London. Wow! <laughs> because I that's I needed to know it when I got there. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was no CSS back then. But, yeah, no, I think that's a great way to start. And, it, 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 and, des and design students will get the concept. So that's great. Exactly. Uh, Thank you for sharing your story. Yes. Um, uh, let's see if there's any other. Are you involved with PJ5 or do you present with the processing foundation at all? I feel like you could do, be doing so much to advance them. Uh, yeah, I think it really depends on, uh, because uh, I have taught uh, intermediate and advanced level of design courses, including portfolio preparation. So based on my students' concept and plan, sometimes I have to use processing, JavaScript, or P5. So at the beginning, I let students do the research, or sometimes even HTML, or just simple software like app, anime CC. It's easy. So anime CC is a new name of flash no. animation. Yeah, it's easy to export to HTML5. So actually, it's based on their visual plan. Then we can just decide what kind of also. Yeah, I mean, yes, because I studied computer science, so I know how programming language should be taught structurally. Yeah. That mean, particularly art and design majors, we are not genius in computation. So we have to teach like a step-by-step -step way. But I know that always, at least one student, every class, we, I had a genius that they don't need to take a class. Yeah. <laughs> because whenever I explain, they do it, coding, coding, coding. Oh, amazing. But we are not genius in coding. That's why we are artists and designers, not computer programmers. So I always uh, uh, try to just share my experience. You need at least two years to be more confident to make a coding directly. Also, you have to be really structured to learn like a page, how to create a circle. Then next advance is more how to do if statement, the post statement, and how to create your own function, how to use a library yeah. algorithm. So I, I introduce how to use a binary tree algorithm. Binary tree algorithm is a very popular computer uh, algorithm in computer science and mathematics that you are, uh, if I introduce how to use a binary tree algorithm in computation, visually it's a possible to control density rather than creating just a randomly generalized, unexpected, uncontrolled images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think your students are very fortunate to have you. Um, I wish I, we had this back when I was in, in design school, but it's it very, very unique. And I, there should be more, uh, totally more. Um, combining of computer science and, and design, I, I'd be totally in favor of that. So thank you. Do you have any um, anything you'd like to say in closing? Um, if not, we can direct people over to the Hangout Room. There's, um, if, you, if you're able to join us over there. Oh, yes. Thank you so much to attend my presentation. Thank you, Maurice, Heather, and Taegyeom, and other participants to attend my presentation. So anyway, I hope 
uh, I would keep in touch with you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.